welcome back to the home safaris here at the Cincinnati Zoo. My name is Jenna, I'm one of the Africa Keepers and I'm so excited to be here today with one of my very favorite animals, the meerkats. We have six meerkats living here at the Cincinnati Zoo. We have five males and one female. The one up here closest to you right now is actually our dominant male. His name is Mark. He is very smart, he's great at training, and he's very greedy about bugs. <laughs> the one, uh, let's see, let's so you can see who's who. The one next up is Zevin, and he has the thickest tail and the blackest nose other than his father, Santana. Our little chunky monkey right here is Shakira. She's our only female. And you might notice her nose is a bit pinker than the others. And that's because as the males age, their noses get darker and the females, theirs don't turn completely black like the adult males do. So you'll always be able to tell Shakira uh, apart because she gets all the food she wants. She is kind of the boss. Usually a female is um, the matriarch or it's a female dominant group of animals. So Shakira kind of gets whatever she, <laughs> she wants. Um, I was hoping Bert would come up here. He is. Don't tell the others, my favorite meerkat. He's a lot of fun. Here he is. And he's the only one of our meerkats that will get on top of the bubble. So if you've ever been here and seen a meerkat right above you while you're inside the bubble, that was definitely Bert. We have two other meerkats that are a little bit shyer. Um, Santana is our old man back there. You'll probably be able to tell by looking at him that he is a lot older. Uh, he is 10, going to be 11 this year. Our shyest meerkat is Louie. He's hanging out by himself. Um, he's a little bit less brave around people, but he does a really good job with all of his training still. Uh, we've done a lot with our meerkats over the years. They used to be pretty nervous when they got here. They came from the Disney Animal Kingdom where they were born. Um, so the others are all five. Mark and Shakira are the youngest. They'll be six in September, and then Louis, Zevin, and Bert will be six in June. But our old man Santana over here is the most submissive, so he's lowest on the totem pole. You guys that have been here and seen our meerkats before might have noticed a little guy by himself. Um, that's Santana here. He's missing a few teeth, but he's doing great. He's really cute and very, very vocal. I don't know if you've been able to hear the noises so far. I'll be quiet for a second. Uh, they're very uh, talkative animals, very vocal, and Santana is the loudest. He grunts and barks when he's waiting for his dinner. So he's very noisy and it does not help him get any extra bugs because the others hear him when he's getting special treats and they come running over. So Santana is, is very fun, um, very small. He does great. He actually likes people, but he does kind of stay out of trouble when it comes to the other meerkats. So these guys have big personalities and I love them so much. Unfortunately, it is just hardly warm enough for them to be out today. So they do have access to go inside if they would like. Um, but I'm gonna sprinkle some more of their food. What they were eating earlier was mealworms and crickets, some of their favorites. <laughs> but if it were nice and sunny, they would come out here every morning and stand up tall and absorb the heat from the sun. And um, it's one of the first things they'll do. They'll wait for the sun to come up and then they'll come out and stand tall and put their bellies towards the sun and that helps them warm up in the mornings. You'll also notice uh, meerkats typically have a lookout. So they'll have one meerkat that is um, on sentinel duty or guard duty. They're watching for the rest of the mob. A group of meerkats is called a mob and it can have anywhere from 10 to 30 meerkats in it. Um, so there's one lookout that protects the mob. They have about 14 different vocalizations and they're looking out for aerial predators like hawks and eagles, as well as um, ground predators like snakes and jackals. So these guys have a lot to be worried about, but they're actually really brave. If they feel threatened by something and they don't have time to dive down in their tunnels, they'll go <laughs> kind of like hopping on all fours with their tails straight in the air and kind of try and act like one big animal. So they'll work as a group and, <laughs> hi, and um, bounce towards that animal, making lots of noises, trying to scare it off. So one of the cutest things I've seen around here is when they see their own reflection in the glass and they'll actually mob at it and try and scare off what I assume they're believing or imagining is another mob of meerkats trying to take over their territory. I mentioned that these guys will come out when it's nice and sunny and sun their bellies. They are diurnal, so they are awake during the day, unlike a lot of animals um, that we've talked about so far, I think. 
These guys are very active during the day once the sun comes out. One of my favorite things about them is actually that they won't get up until they're nice and ready. So they're kind of like teenagers. They really enjoy sleeping in. And if I come in in the mornings, the lights automatically come on at seven. But if I come any earlier than 7.30, there's no way I'm getting them out of bed. They'll actually sleep underground and um, stay there until they feel that the heat of the sun. So these guys do the same thing inside. They'll sleep in tunnels that we have. Um, you can see around our habitat here, but they also dig tunnels and they'll go underground. So you can imagine they live in the southern parts of Africa where it gets really, really hot and dry. They'll live in savannas and grasslands and um, it can get really hot there. So if they need to cool off, they will actually lay flat on their bellies that don't have a ton of fur. Let's see if I can show you guys their bellies. So their bellies <laughs> uh, don't have a ton of fur. That's why they can soak up the heat of the sun and they can also cool off by finding a damp shaded area. Another thing that they'll do other than um, for hiding, they'll do that is different than hiding from predators is also to cool off. So if they feel really hot, they can go in their tunnels where it's nice and cool. I'm gonna show you guys some of the enrichment we like to give them. They have a bottle right now, so we just repurposed and recycled a bottle to make some nice enrichment for the meerkats. We're gonna shift you guys around here. I have an ostrich egg for them, which you might notice is about as big as a meerkat. I don't know if you've ever seen an ostrich egg before, but we hollowed it out and I just put some bugs in there. We'll see if they're smart enough to get the bugs out. And I mentioned that it is a little bit chilly, so they do have a box, one of their favorite things, and a nice comfy uh, blanket to help them keep warm if they're feeling chilly. Meerkats are so funny. They love comfort. It's very important to them that they're comfort comfortable. Um, so these guys love to cuddle up together. They sleep as a big group, and they take really good care of one another. I mentioned they have a lot of vocalizations, so they'll, they'll do different sounds depending on the predator that they see. But also if they're annoyed with one another, Shakira is pretty hilarious. She is more vocal when she is annoyed and she makes a sound I've never heard the boys make. So <laughs> if they bother her too much, she definitely lets them know. When meerkats have babies, they are called pups. So a meerkat baby is very, very small and it wouldn't come out of the den for weeks and weeks so that it can stay safe from predators. But once it is out of the den, it'll actually be taken care of by the entire mob. They're really family oriented and they'll take really good care of one another. Um, so dads, brothers, uncles will all watch after little ones, which is pretty neat. These guys, um, in the mornings, aside from warming up in the sun, they'll also climb up on the termite mounds that we have here and they'll get a really good look um, at what's going on. They do this sentinel duty all day long and they take turns on who's doing that. Um, but they have excellent vision. So they have really good far-sighted vision and that helps them see the predators from far away so they can stay nice and safe. Another cool adaptation that they have are these dark circles around their eyes. That helps um, shade the sun from that, protects their eyes that way, as well as a nictitating membrane or an extra eyelid that keeps their eyes nice and safe while they're digging tunnels underground. Um, so it kind of works like goggles for them. They also can close their ears and that helps them from keeping, or helps keep dirt from going inside their ears. So these guys have all sorts of really cool adaptations. And actually one that's probably the most impressive I haven't talked about yet is I mentioned that they eat bugs. Um, so you'll see these mealworms and crickets that they love. They'll also hunt scorpions. These guys are, have some sort of resistance or immunity to venom. Um, they can still be killed by venomous snakes, but they have been known to survive a snake bite that um, comes from a cobra, a very venomous snake, or a puff adder, different snakes that would kill humans. Meerkats have survived somehow. We also think they've built up immunity to scorpions, and they also work really hard to hunt them safely. So they'll um, teach their pups how to eat scorpions by coming with a dead scorpion and then coming with one with a stinger removed and then coming with an injured scorpion. <laughs> You're naughty. Yes, you are. Um, and eventually their pups will learn how to eat scorpions safely by doing it that way. But they do have some sort of immunity to it. Of course, they're going to avoid the venomous sting. Um, I just want to mention, if you hear that crazy twittering in the background, um, those are our painted dogs. So the meerkats are very vocal, but it's the dogs that you're hearing if you're hearing more of a high-pitched noise right now. 
if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. Kayla wants to know about the black uh, dark circles around the eyes, which I think you already mentioned, but if you could... Yeah, so it's basically like football players or baseball players that wear the black underneath their eyes. It helps absorb the sunlight and um, refracts it so that they aren't getting blinded by the sun. Kind of um, works as sunglasses like we would wear if it were a really sunny day. Sam wants to know how old uh, they live, how long they live. So in the wild, they'll typically live to be about eight years old. But here in zoos, um, where they don't have to worry so much about finding food or predators and they get health checks um, every year, and well, every day we observe them and make sure that they're healthy. If they do get to go to the vet here, they can live to be 16 or older. So we're really hoping our old man Santana will hang around with us for, for at least five more years or so. Uh, we can definitely specialize his diet if we need to because of his missing teeth that he has, but I think it just makes them really cute. I mentioned that they eat a lot of bugs and scorpions, but they would also find lizards, birds, um, grubs, all sorts of things um, that you probably would think are kind of gross. Louie is an excellent hunter, and this is Louie right here. He catches birds that aren't very smart and come in and try and steal the bugs from the meerkats. So Louie is a good hunter. He also caught a praying mantis one year and the cicadas. So he gets some big juicy bugs and he doesn't let anyone have them. So these guys are very protective of their food. They also get different types of produce, which if you look up here, you'll notice the birds are taking a part in eating some of their food. And the meerkats, if there are bugs around, they will ignore any of the healthy stuff. So again, they're funny. They like to sleep in. They don't like their veggies very much but they will eat them. It gives them the water that they need that they won't find very easily in the, in the desert or in the wild where they live. And so these guys will get carrots, sweet potato, apple, cucumber, and uh, raw meat is one of their very favorites. So at night when we need, to, need them to come in and be really safe inside, we do a rapid click on a clicker. You may have seen us use it in a training video before. And they come running inside and then they all get their favorite meal of the, the raw meat. They'll also get mice here at the zoo. And um, I mentioned the insectivore diet. It's just a, a little kibble that you might see um, on the rock work here. It's kind of like dog food, but it's made specifically for insectivores. Now meerkats are technically carnivores, but they eat like omnivores and they primarily eat, eat insects. So they're insectivores also, but technically they are carnivores. They will eat just about anything that, that moves that they can catch. Evan and Vincent want to know how they feel and if they're soft. Oh, well these guys, they're, they're sort of soft. Um, they're kind of like a medium haired dog, I would say. Not too, too soft, a little bit wiry, but um, some of them are, are okay with touching. The others don't like to be touched a lot. Bert especially likes chin scratches, but it took a lot of time building up trust and relationship with the meerkats for them to let me touch them. And the reason that I did that was so that I can give them their flea and tick treatment uh, once a month. So for any of you with cats or dogs at home, you may give a little liquid between their shoulder blades to keep them safe from ticks and fleas. So I had to get these guys used to being touched between their shoulder blades, and then I can give it to them. Of course, I picked the most scared one to show you guys, but then I can give them a little drop of liquid right between their shoulder blades, and that shows, or that allows them to get nice and healthy um, treatments without being stressed. So we do work to build relationships with the animals. They're actually trained for um, vaccinations and they'll come into a little tube and they get a shot while they're getting rewarded with meat and we don't have to catch them or take them to the vet to get their yearly vaccinations. So they're very smart. They also do training with targets so they each have their own shape and their own color and they know that and they'll touch their nose to it and then they get a reward. That allows us to help them get some exercise or actually pinpoint one of them. So if I needed to see Mark, for example, I would show him his blue star, he would follow it, and then I could get him away from the rest of the group. And I can also ask him to stand up tall. So that way we can get a good look at their belly and their paws and their chins and, and things like that. Avery and Max and several others would like to know who their favorite trainer is. <laughs> you know what's funny is, that's always such a hard question to answer because our animals love a lot of people, but I am so excited to say that I might actually be able to say honestly that I'm their favorite. Um, they're a little nervous right now. Those dogs are making quite a lot of noise, um, 
but these guys really do trust me and allow me to work with them, but I've put a lot of time in to do that. So I'm thankful that I get to work with them four days a week and, um, and see them on my, on my closing shift. So I do see them five days a week and I work with them really closely. Um, so I hope that I'm their favorite. I, I would really like to think that. <laughs> so we wanted to thank you guys for um, all of your support. The donations that have come in so far have been amazing. We hope that you enjoy all of these safaris that we're doing. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed the meerkats here today. Are there any last questions we have? All right, well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a good day.